let's start with the first thing on the top and there's the subdivision modifier i have a few subdivisions here so if i move it all the way down this will happen and if i move it all the way to the four this will happen i can go even further but there's no point of doing it uh, at this stage and even if you're here just for baking height maps, uh, there's no point of doing it, period. I can close this one and I will focus on the height map painter uh, modifier. So let's start from the top. We will focus on this section here and then we will move the down to the controls for the each layer or the height input. So first here we have a GN, which refers to geometry nodes, height switch, which means we will either disable it or enable it like so then we have this uh, checkbox which won't do much now and this is when you're using uh, this tool for the surfaces that are not flat like this terrain for surfaces like rocks or i don't know characters uh, and so on then we have this distance from surface value so if i type 250 here you see what happens uh, then you can do almost the same with this one. This is distance influence. You can just move it uh, left or right, which will give you those same results a lot faster. Uh, then we have this material height switch, and I suggest that you don't use it while this one is enabled because this is what will happen, you see. So this one is just intended to be used when previewing displacement set on a material level. We have also this disable layer color switch. So now we're just previewing the shader. You can also change the color of the shader. You can disable shader, but then you won't see much. Then you can also preview individual layer. So this is the first one, the second one, the third one, and the last one. I can also preview the first three layers as a RGB. We see these first three layers, first three height inputs as uh, red, green, and blue. And if we would want to check the last one, it would appear as white, while here it appears black. And then the last switch is vertex value switch. There's not much uh, going on, nothing much has changed, but again, if we type one or two here, and if we disable the material details, we can do this by disabling the shader. You see what we end up with. Now let's move to the individual inputs and their controls. You see here, first layer and all the way to the fourth layer. So we can change uh, the influence. We can change the position. We can rotate. We can also preview it with the box projection, but this will only work if the material is uh, enable material preview. So this here. So because if I enable it now, not much has changed. We just have this screwed uh, shading going on. But if I would disable this and enable this, and press box projection now you see how things have changed but we won't use this for now it doesn't make sense to use it on a flat object so same thing as for the first image we have all these uh, possibilities uh, with moving i can go this one is more pronounced up and down left and right and rotating but we have something additional and that's the type of blending that we can do with this input so for the first one uh, it doesn't make sense because it's just the first one but the second one already can make a significant uh, difference to your design so we have add lighten so you see here this line add lighten multiply so everything that was black on the second image has actually eaten up everything below it and below it we have the first layer and subtract so everything that was white had made sort of a depression uh, where this value is present 
So if I would go all the way to the last layer, these uh, changes will be much more evident. And I should mention that this last layer has its blending mode uh, set to subtract by default. So I suggest that you use it as a mask. Multiply, lighten, add. And that's it. Now let's see what we can do about tiling with this tool. So let's go to the texture paint. You can use these layers here, but don't think of them as uh, Photoshop layers because that's not why we have made them. It is more like a tool for you to access images that you're painting on more easily. So we can use this button here to jump from image to image or you can do it here as well you can replace the image but first you have to unpack the image you want to replace here you see the name of this data block that is holding this image and here you see the name of the file that is placed inside the data block let's say that we want to change this image and I will go to this height map painter modifier and I will check the individual preview switch because this won't change automatically and preview this same image here. Of course, if I would go here, I would see it as well. If I disable material height switch and enable GN height switch, then I would see it elevated even in this solid viewport shading. I can kill the effect of these other layers and I can do that from inside this modifier. So you have these big blue sliders, just slide them all the way to the left, right? And then same thing, I will choose this soft brush. I will go to the view and use this tiling. Then I will go to the brush settings at the bottom and set tiling on X and Y. I will change color to white and I will choose the texture. This time I will choose a different texture. So let's press new, go here, open, and let's find something interesting. So I still have to set the stroke features. So anchored and this time I will use edge to edge and let's go. This is maybe too strong, but what I can do, I can either use different uh, color or different tone. So for example, I could undo this and use maybe something like this grayish. Or I can go back to white and just lower down the value or the influence of this layer that I'm painting on. So let's make this stroke again. So you see it's rather tall, but if I do this, it is okay. But have in mind when doing this that you're actually influencing everything that is on this image. So you choose the right approach for your needs. So I can now either create a new brush by duplicating this one, or I can duplicate this asset, but I don't want to do that. Uh, I'll just change the texture. I have choose this uh, surface from one of the packs that uh, are available. Let's increase the subdivisions. Nice. And as I mentioned previously, it is all tileable. And there we go. We'll go to the Edit Preferences Install from Disk, and then I will install the tool that is named uh, Height Map Painter. You see it here. I will close this. Then I will go to the texture paint mode and press N. Go down to where the height map painter is uh, visible and click this import height map terrain. Now you will see that everything is kind of dark now. Let me just zoom out. And, and of course there's some clipping going on because of these settings that are default Blender uh, 3D viewport camera settings. So 
Instead of entering it manually, I will go to the Terrain Mixer tab and just click this fixed clipping distance. And by pressing a numpad uh, dot, I have this terrain here. And let me just go back to the layout because we will be jumping to the 3D viewport layout every now and then. So same thing here, Terrain Mixer menu and fixed clipping distance. And there you have it. Right away, you see that I don't have cycles enabled here. So I'm in Eevee, I can, if I want, I can go to and enable cycles, but I will stay uh, in Eevee for now. So you can see right away that we have this text embedded in this terrain and it says height map painter. And this is the new tool that comes uh, with the terrain mixer suit, uh, not the free add-on, the one available at various platforms, uh, links below. So let's just see what does this tool do. Now, if I go back to the texture paint uh, workspace, I will just disable these overlays and as well as this uh, gizmo. Actually, I can leave the gizmo because it can be useful. Here in the end panel on the right side, you will see height map painter. This is the same menu we used for importing this uh, terrain object. If you check it here in the default layout, you won't see it here. So it's just visible while you're in the texture paint viewport. Here you have four layers and this is all you can get. You can't get more than these four. So these layers hold images that are packed with the tool. So if you want to work on those images, you can. Those are just... Uh, 1k uh, images you he you see here 1k and you can also replace them with new set of images so to do that what you would do you would go to the file external data unpack resources right or you can just edit the images that you have available here so for example this first one i can go here to the image resize and I can change its resolution and then save it within this file. I would recommend you to unpack them so you can even edit them externally outside of Blender and so you don't have the Blender file that is really huge. And EXR images, uh, the ones that are better quality like 4K or 8K, they are really huge like 256 uh, megs, 500 megs one gig and so on so i will go back to the layout default layout i will go here to the modifiers and i will also go to the preferences go to the interface and set this value to one there are a bunch of uh, things you can adjust here it's all repeatable as you can see these are just four sections here and some settings on the top, but uh, I just wanted to see better what I'm doing without scrolling too much.